Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Anthony and in today's video, I am going to talk to you about how to create the perfect fashion portfolio ready for interviews. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer, this is how I make my portfolios. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. I just know that this is the process that I go through and what I do and it's got me jobs, so clearly it's working. There are other ways of presenting a portfolio. Some people like it a lot more clean, some people like it a lot more simple, but for me, I like to pack in as much information as I can in my portfolio so the people that I'm going to do an interview with know that I can do the job and they know the full capability of me. So the first thing to think about is buying a good quality portfolio. So I got this from Paper Chase and it is a leather portfolio and it comes with 20 clear plastic sleeves and honestly it has been one of the best portfolios I've ever got. I've also got this in A3 because when I first started my career I was told that A3 is the best way to present your work but now after getting a little bit older and a lot more mature I feel like an A4 portfolio for me works better. It fits my bag easier, it's easier to talk through and it's not as big and bulky but I still have my A3 portfolio just in case I ever want to revisit it or relook at it. So what's good about this is obviously it's leather so instantly it looks luxury, instantly it looks really good and really professional. So the first thing to do when you're trying to create your portfolio is go through your history of work and start cultivating it, bringing together different projects that you've done, different work that you've done, different places that you've worked, interned or whatever and just bring it all together so you can look at it in one big go. From there I would start considering your layout. I like quite a packed layout. I don't like too much white space because personally for me I think white space is wasted space whereas other people like it cleaner and simpler but that's just preference. When considering your layout you need to really think about whether you want your portfolio to be portrait or landscape because what you don't want to be doing is if you've got your portfolio and you're talking through it you don't want to have to keep going oh so this is one project and oh, this is another project. Oh, this is another one. It just looks messy. It doesn't really convey that you're very organized in my opinion. So you really want one clear format all the way through your portfolio. I go for a landscape one because I just think it's easier and it's nicer to talk through as you're pulling over the pages. So once you've decided your layout and you've started collating your work, you need to bring all your projects together and they need to follow a certain flow. So with me, I like to go sort of mood boards, colour palettes, all of that sort of stuff and then I go into a range and then I go into the actual CADs and I think it's really important that you demonstrate that you are right for that role. So no matter what role you're going for, I always adapt my portfolio to that role. So for example, if I'm going for somewhere that's a lot more high street based, I would make sure that it's jam packed full of trends and make sure that I'm talking about what is relevant at the moment. If I'm going for a more high fashion brand, I'll make sure that it's all about the CAD work, the detail, what hardware is on a bag, where's the inspiration come from. It's got to have a story when you're going for a brand. So you really need to demonstrate that you can do that job and that job in all of its aspects. So it doesn't matter whether you're going for something that's like an assistant designer or whether you're going for the designer level or senior designer, you need to demonstrate that you can do the wealth of things that you will be expected to do. So I like to make sure that I've got every bit that I would be required to do in my portfolio. So for example, I start out with mood boards. I make sure that every project has got a lovely mood board that I can talk through, where I've got my inspiration from, and then that leads me onto the colour palette. Because the colour palette directly links to your mood board. Your colours come from the images in there and you can talk about the trend and you know where the colours have come from and why you've chosen them specific ones. I also like to make sure that there's always pantones at the bottom so you can talk through that selection process. From there I go on to my fabrications and this is usually all on one page for me because I just like to make sure it's all there and I don't have to turn too many pages while I'm talking so that people who are interviewing me are engaged with me and what I'm saying rather than rifling through my portfolio. So then, as I say, fabrications and I try and pull out the key fabrications of that trend and I think this is really important because as you go through your career you're going to be selecting colours, you're going to be selecting fabrications and you need to demonstrate that you can do that in your portfolio. From there I do a key styles board which is usually just a collection of images that's just on one page and it's kind of 
kind of just get straight to the point and saying what are the key styles for this trend. So it might be a puffer jacket, it might be a jacket, it might be a certain kind of trainer. It doesn't really matter as long as it really relates back to the trend that you're trying to portray as you're talking. Then I do a range board. So building ranges is really important in fashion and I can go into that in another video but basically it's making sure that the range that you're putting forward is not got any gaps in it. So you've not missed any key trends or key styles. So being able to build a range is really important. And usually you have to be able to build a range from head to toe. So it's about the footwear, it's about the trousers, it's about the shirts and the t-shirts and it's about the accessories that goes with it and you need to really visualize the whole range as a whole and really put it together and identify gaps that you need to fill as a designer which is a big part of the job and from there i go into factory specs and cads so this is where i like to put in some full specs where i can demonstrate how I communicate what I need to communicate with the factories. So here's where I'll split my CADs out and then I'll do a front page with just kind of the details being pointed to onto the jacket or the the shoe or the accessory, depending on what I'm designing. I also have a nice little section at the side that goes through each point in more detail so the supplier can read through it and just know exactly what I want. I also usually put a fabrications key at the bottom of my CAD. Not everyone does this, but a lot of people do do it. And that's just to easily communicate to the factory what you need. So whether it's a certain type of stitch color, whether it's a certain type of button, whether it's a certain type of hardware color, you know, what is the main fabrication? It's all put in that small little section at the bottom. And it's just really clear and easy for the supplier to understand. And it's really easy for you to talk through when you are in an interview. From there, I go onto a color page where I put all of my colors out so the supplier can easily see every single color in every fabrication that I would like to produce. And again, this is really good because it's showing that you're not only covering just one color in the range that you're trying to build, but you're expanding it and you're really trying to capitalize on that key block so you're getting the most out of it. So whether it's a check that you need a certain color, is it in wool, is it in tech fabrics, you know, what is it? So then you've got a full range there so you can talk through it. From there, usually I go on to show a bit more of the technical side of design. So it's all about measurements, it's all about blocks, it's all about specs. So that's where I kind of go into it. A lot of people do this over the top of their information section of the CADs, which is totally fine. It's just depends on how you want to work. It's, there's no right or wrong way to send a CAD to the supplier as long as all the information there is communicated well. And then finally I go on to the internals. So what's the lining like? What's the lining layout? Is it got a special kind of lining with a print on or is it just plain? Has it got piping? And this is the basic kind of format that I lay out all of my CADs. So with accessories, it might be a little bit smaller than that. With an outerwear piece, you need to go into more detail because it's a lot more detailed of a garment. However, saying that at higher end brands that I've worked at, especially on accessories, you go into so much detail. At high street level, you don't really go into as much detail because they are fully factored. And what fully factored means is basically that they are supplying all the trims, all the hardware, all of the fabric, and you just have to choose off a color card and say, this is the kind of thing that I like, and they'll go off and source it. Whereas if you're a designer brand, you'll be making all of them different components yourself. So you'll be sourcing the leather, you'll be sourcing the trims, you'll be sourcing the hardware, you'll be collating all of this information, writing it on your card, and then sending it to the supplier and they will then go and order exactly what you want. Or if it's a custom bespoke piece of hardware, you'll have to draw a CAD up for that hardware piece and then you will get that made and then your supplier will order from the hardware place. So you know, there's loads of different ways of working and I'll do a video in the future, what is the difference between high street and high end fashion design. And I might even do a how to lay out a portfolio for each one because the portfolios that I'm showing you is a much more commercial way of laying out your portfolio. So it'd be stuff for people like Top Man, ASOS, New Look, you know, River Island, them kind of places where they want to see that you can work fast, you can work quick and you can get all the trends in one go. Whereas at high fashion, it's, not as trend led so much. I mean, they do follow trends, but they are more the trend setters rather than the trend followers. So, you know, there is a bit of a difference in how you lay out your portfolios for them. Just finishing details for how to lay out your portfolio. So I always put a title page. So I always put my name and my role 
on, so Anthony James Pullin, and then menswear designer, accessories designing. You put wherever your speciality is. And from there, I always do a title page as well for each individual project. So when I'm at an interview and I'm talking to people, they kind of can see the image that I'm trying to portray for that collection and they can kind of visualize what's to come. And I think the most important thing about your portfolio is that you portray that you are creative and commercially aware, because at the end of the day, you can be the most creative person in the world and you can do these amazing designs that look really avant-garde and look really cool for Instagram. However, if you're not commercially aware and you know that these items that you're designing aren't wearable and aren't sellable, then an employer is not going to want to hire you because you can only do these like top level things. I mean, it's probably great for catwalks and runway for people like Alexander McQueen or Burberry because they will need people that can do that kind of design. And as a designer, I think you should be able to do both. You should be able to do that avant-garde kind of thing that you would have done at university. And you also need to be commercially aware enough to say, okay, well, how can I translate this from the runway that we're doing to a commercially viable product that is wearable and people can sell en masse? Because at the end of the day, fashion is all about making money. If you want to see my online portfolio, go to socoolfashion.simplesite.com. This was a free website and that's why it's got Simplesite at the end, because I haven't paid for it, but it's really good for when you're applying for jobs. A lot of them are asking for online portfolios so they can see your work up front, and this is a great way of doing it. It's free, it's easy, it's a click and drop kind of format, kind of like Wix or that kind of thing, but it's free and it's a lot more simple. Leave some comments down below and I'd love to see your online portfolios. If you've got any questions or feedback, please leave them also in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on social media. My Instagram is Anthony James London and my Twitter is So Called Fashion. Please also check out my Etsy shop at So Called Fashion, where you can support this channel and buy CADs and images and things like that that you can really use in your day-to-day -day design life if you just don't have time to draw that jacket or that accessories piece or anything like that, you can go there and buy it and then edit it to what you need. It's great. All right, okay, thanks for watching. All right, tra. Tra, tra, tra. Bye.